So the final article in this series is titled Ruqya, Spiritual Healing, which can be viewed at missionislam.com. As I have said in previous episodes, if you are affected by any of these afflictions, please consult a local imam or Islamic scholar. Let's read. Ruqya, Spiritual Healing. Ruqya is commonly translated in English as incantation, which carries a negative meaning since the word incantation is usually associated with magic spells and witchcraft. However, ruqya in Islam is the recitation of Qur'an, seeking of refuge, remembrance and supplications that are used as a means of treating sicknesses and other problems. Ruqya are of two types. One, Rukya as Sharia, and two, Rukya as Shirkia. A Rukya as Sharia, mentioned above, has three conditions. Ibn Hajar, Rahimullah, said, there is a consensus on the using of Rukya if three conditions are met. One, it must be the speech of Allah, Quran, and his names and attributes. Two, it must be in the Arabic language or what is known to be its meanings in other languages. And three, to believe that Rukya has no benefit by itself, but the benefits are from Allah. This type of Rukya is permissible and is the main subject of this topic. Ar Rukya as Shirkiya, this contradicts the conditions of Rukya as Sharia and has in it shirk, associating partners with Allah, it leads a person to his destruction in this life and the next, and increases calamities and sicknesses. This type of ruqya is prohibited from the statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This type includes magic, whether learning, practicing or teaching, fortune-telling, horoscopes, superstitious belief, and at Zimima, charms and amulets. Conditions of a person who treats with Ruqya 1. He must have the right belief in Allah, based on Qur'an, Sunnah, and keep away from shirk, etc. 2. He must have sincerity in worshipping Allah and have a good intention in treating people. 3. He must be firm in his obedience to Allah and keep away from all that is forbidden. 4. He must keep far away from unlawful places and situations that can lead to what is forbidden, for example, isolating himself with a female, etc. 5. He must guard the affairs of his patients and protect their secrets. 6. He must propagate the religion of Allah, give the patient advice and admonitions on the rights of Allah with regards to his commandments and prohibitions. 7. He should have knowledge about the affairs of the patient and sicknesses. 8. He should have knowledge about the reality of jinns so as not to have them harm or threaten him while curing the patient. Ibn Din, Rahimullah said, Treating with Muavidat, Surah an nas al-Falak, etc., and other forms, such as the names of Allah, are medicine for the soul. So if these forms of treatment are on the tongue of the righteous, cure will be achieved by the will of Allah. Conditions for the person, patient, receiving ruqya. 1. He must have complete belief that harm and benefit are only from Allah. And 2. He must be patient. Conditions of Ruqya as Sharia 1. It must be with the speech of Allah, his names and attributes, or the speech of his messenger, peace be upon him. 2. It must be in Arabic, or what is known to be its meaning in other languages. 3. To believe that verily 
Ruqya has no benefit by itself, but the cure is from Allah. Four, not to perform Ruqya in a state of major impurity, Junub, or in a place that is not permissible to perform Ibadah, i.e. graveyard, bathroom, etc. The reality of magic. Definition of magic. 1. Magic is a knot or spell that has effects on the heart and body. It causes the heart or body to become sick. It can kill a person. It separates a man from his wife and destroys family ties. 2. It is an incantation, not spell, and statement that are used in speeches, written or in actions that have an effect on the body, heart or intellect of a person without having direct contact with that person. It is a reality that kills, causes sickness or prevents relationships, sexual, between a man and his wife, causes separation between them or between families, places anger between families or friends and causes a person to love those whom he hates in order to have a relationship and to be a source of spreading destruction. Magic and its existence is confirmed by the Qur'an and Sunnah and is agreed upon by the scholars. It is a reality and a truth and it affects a person only by Allah's will. There is a consensus among the scholars of Tafsir that Surah Al-Falaq was revealed because of Habib bin Asam who did magic on the Prophet, peace be upon him. Magic is an art that requires skill and proficiency from the one who performs it. It is a type of knowledge that has a foundation, methodology and principles. However, learning it is not permissible and it is kufr, disbelief, because it cannot be learned or practiced without requesting the help of shaitan, worshipping him and using forbidden and unlawful things. So it is kufr to learn or practice it. Imam Ibn Hajar Rahimullah said, Magic is disbelief and learning it is kufr. Fat ul-Bari 10 slash 195. Imam al-Nawawi Rahimullah said, The knowledge of magic is forbidden and it is among the major sins. Fatwa Ibn Abbas 2 slash 384. The Prophet peace be upon him included it among the major sins that destroy mankind and needs to be kept away from. Ibn Qudama said, Teaching and learning magic is forbidden and there is no difference on the issue by the scholars. al mughni 8 slash 151 The punishment for magicians The punishment for magicians is beheading. The Prophet peace be upon him said, The punishment for a magician is beheading. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, ordered all magicians to be killed in his time. This proves the severity of magic. So it is compulsory on us to keep away from magic and anything that is connected to it. Treatment for magic. Treatment has two divisions. One, what is taken as prevention from magic before it occurs. A. Be mindful and perform all compulsory acts and leave off all that is unlawful and seek repentance from all evil deeds. B. Constantly recite, contemplate and act on the glorious Qur'an in which it becomes a daily routine. C. Seek protection with supplications, seeking refuge and remembrances that are legislated by Allah and his messenger, peace be upon him. From among those supplications are the following. In the name of Allah, with whose name nothing is harmed on the earth, nor in the heavens, and he is the all-hearing, all-knowing. 80-86 Recite Ayatul Kursi after every prayer, before sleeping, every morning, and every evening. Asahi Ibn Majah 2-332 Recite the following three times in the mornings, evenings, and before sleeping. Surah Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and An-Nas. One must be mindful and recite the remembrances and supplications 
of the mornings and evenings, as well as the remembrances and supplications after every prayer, before sleep, upon waking, before travelling, etc. D. Eat seven dates in the morning if it's possible, as stated by the Prophet, peace be upon him. Whoever wakes up in the morning and eats seven ajwa dates, preferably from the boundaries of Medina, he will never be afflicted by poison nor magic. Al-Bukhari 10 247, Al-Muslim 3 1617. The second division. Treatment of magic after it has occurred. A. First type. Extract and destroy the magic. If the magic is known, extracting and destroying it with permissible methods from the Quran and Sunnah is the best and most suitable way of curing it. B. The second type. Rukya as Sharia. From among them are 1. Grind seven green lote leaves, then pour water over it, enough to take a shower, and recite the following over it. I seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan, the accursed. Surah Al Fatiha, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 1 5, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 102, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 137, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 255, which is the Ayat Al Kursi, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 284 286, Surah Al Imran, Ayah 1 5, Surah Al Imran, Ayah 85, Surah Al Anam, Ayah 17, Surah Al Araf, Ayah 54 to 56, Surah Al Araf, Ayah 117 to 122, Surah Yunis, Ayah 79 to 82, Surah Al Isra, Ayah 82, Surah Al Kaf, Ayah 39, Surah Al Taha, Ayah 65 to 69, Surah Al Mu'minun, Ayah 115 to 118, Surah Yasin, Ayah 1 to 9, Surah As Safat, Ayah 1 to 10. The reality of the evil eye. The evil eye is a terrible affliction that afflicts mankind. It is the most widespread affliction in the world. Most people of this nation, Muslims, will die from it after what Allah has decreed. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Most of those who will die from my nation after what Allah has decreed will be from the evil eye. Fat al haq Mubin as Sahih 747. The evil eye is a reality and a truth that a person needs to seek cure and protection from. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The evil is true reality. Sahih Muslim 2188. It is permissible in Islam to seek ruqya for it, as Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, made it an ease to take ruqya. For fever and the evil eye, Sahih Muslim 2197. The evil eye is from two sources the evil eye from mankind, and two, the evil eye from jinn. The evil eye from mankind is confirmed in many narrations, as Abu Salid, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to seek refuge from jinns and the evil eye from mankind, Al Tirmidhi 2058. As for the evil eye from jinns, it has been narrated by Um Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw in her house a slave girl, and in her face was a safa, upon which the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek ruqya for her, for verily she is afflicted with a look, evil eye. Bukhari 5739. The scholars have said a safa is the evil eye from jinns. The reason for the evil eye is mostly because of envy. Envy is to wish for the prevention of bounty for another person, even though the envier doesn't wish for this bounty. The reality of envy is the result of hatred and malice, which is the result of anger. Fatul Haq al Mubin 219. The evil eye is like an arrow or spear that leaves the soul of the envier and goes to the person that is envied. It afflicts the person envied at times and sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't afflict him, it is because of the protective methods he uses, whether supplications, seeking refuge, etc. Also, when it doesn't afflict him, the evil eye can return to the envier. The Medicine of the Prophet 138 What is an important fact to know 
is that the evil eye has no effect except by Allah's will. A man can give himself the evil eye and he can also give it to others. It can afflict someone without even being seen by the envier. For example, a blind man cannot see a person, but he can still cast the evil eye. Or perhaps if the person is not around and they are described to the envier without being seen by him, it can afflict that person. It can also be afflicted by one being amazed at himself without being envious to himself or others. The evil eye can be done by anyone, even a loved one or a righteous person. So it is incumbent on each and every one of us to take the necessary precautions and try to prevent being affected by the evil eye and to say the supplications and remembrances upon seeing something amazing and good. Fat al Haq al Mubin 198. The Treatment of the Evil Eye. There are categories of treatment for those afflicted with the evil eye. The first category, treatments before the evil eye occurs. There are many types, which is as follows. Protect yourself and those who you fear from it with remembrances, supplications and seeking refuge that is in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah, as is mentioned in the first category for the treatment of magic. Supplicate for whom you fear might be afflicted with it if you see something within yourself, your wealth, your son, your brother, or anything that amazes you with blessing. From the statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, if anyone says from his brother what amazes him, let him supplicate for him with blessing. This is what Allah wills, and there is no strength except with Allah. O Allah, bless him with it. Guard anything or anyone that is attractive and may be recipient of the evil eye. This means, one, when a person has a beautiful family, he should guard them by seeking protection from Allah for them, teaching and commanding them to do so, and also by dressing them properly, not to expose their bodies or beauty so as not to be envied and affected by the evil eye. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to seek protection for Hassan and Hussein, may Allah be pleased with them, by saying, I seek refuge for both of you in the perfect words of Allah and from every Satan, vermin, and from every evil eye. 2. If someone has wealth, he should guard it by asking Allah to bless and protect it and be thankful to Allah. 3. If someone has good news and he knows people will envy him because of it, he should guard it by keeping it secret. Note: If you know a person is famous for being envious and is known to affect people with the evil eye, it is important to keep away from him. Second category, treatments after the affliction of the evil eye. 1. If the person who causes the evil eye is known, command him to make ablution, wudu, and then the afflicted person should shower from the water from the ablution, Sunan Abu Dawood 419. 2. Recite as much as possible, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 137, Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 5-4, Surah Al-Qalam, Ayah 51, Surah Al-Mulk, Ayah 3, Surah Al-Aqaf, Ayah 31, Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 82, Surah Al-Fusilat, Ayah 44, Surah Yunus, Ayah 57, Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 14, Surah Ashwara, Ayah 80, Ayah Tukursi, Ayah 255, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falak, and Nas. Recite the above Ayah along with the authentic supplications that have been mentioned previously. Then blow it in the right hand and wipe over the place of pain, as has been stated in the second type of treatment for magic. 3. Recite over water and blow into it. It is better if the recitation is done over zamzam or rainwater. Then the sick person should drink from it and pour the remainder over himself. Or recite over olive oil and anoint his entire body with it. The third category implementing the necessary steps that keep away the evil eye from the envious. They are as follows. 1. Seek refuge in Allah from all evil. 2. Fear Allah and implement all his commands and keep away from all that he prohibited. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. Sahih al-Dirmidhi. 
Three, exercise patience to the envier. Pardon him. Do not fight him or complain about him and do not possess any evil inner feelings to harm him. Four, have complete trust in Allah. For whomever places his trust in Allah, Allah will be enough for him. Five, have no fear of the envier and do not keep pondering or thinking about him. This is a very beneficial treatment. Six, turn to Allah in sincerity and seek his pleasure in all things. Seven, seek repentance from all sins because they humiliate mankind. Allah says, and whatever calamities befall you, it is because of what your own hands have earned, and he pardons much. Surah Ash-Shu'ara, Ayah 30. 8. Give optional charity and do as much good as possible. For verily, that has a great and amazing effect in combating evil from the envier. 9. Keep away from the fire of the envier, the oppressor, and those who afflict others by being good to them. For every moment they increase in evil, oppression, and envy, you increase in being good to them. Give them advice, be merciful, and pardon them. This cannot be achieved easily, except for one who has a great fortune from Allah. And ten, have complete sincerity and belief in the unity of Allah, the wise, the judge. He is harmed by nothing, and nothing benefits him. Glory be to him, and he is above all things. Ibn Qayyim 2 slash 238 to 245. That is it for this episode. I have learned so many things today, and I hope you have too. As usual, can I request that you please leave a five star rating on Apple Podcasts? and share the podcast with your family and friends. We are on all the major podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Deezer, and we are also on YouTube as a voice-only channel. Do join the Islamic Audio Bytes community on Facebook and Instagram, and also check out our website at islamicaudiobytes.com. If you would like to comment to us directly, please do so at islamicaudiobytes at gmail.com. Otherwise, Thank you for listening. Hope your day is full of goodness. Assalamu alaikum.